session and we are done with session right so let's move on to the uh, so next one which is uh, filters now this filters concept is again uh, something which is uh, important in this uh, server technology right <coughs> So these filters are basically something which we call it as a, you know internal customized uh, file value which you can build uh, as a layer in order to make sure that you know the request whatever you are getting is uh, the true request or or some valid some validations or uh, you can use this in so many ways like uh, if you want to use this in uh, you know conversions or log maintenance. You can use this for uh, compression, decompression, you know, input validations and all. Right? There is something which you can make it as uh, pre-processing or post-processing of your solid. Right? So that is basically which uh, we call it as a filter. Now, how does it work? Is so let me show you a simple diagram over here. Let us say you have a client who is here. So who is actually requesting for a page? And let us say you have a server, right? So whenever client gets a request for anything, right? Let us say this server where you have something called a uh, web container. On this there are so many servlets. Right? Let us say there is one servlet. Here. So what happens here is if you want to create any filter, it will be created as a boundary for this servlet because for the so filter uh, you have to tag the filter to servlet. So that when your request is coming to servlet, right? When you recall any servlet, first the request will be moved to filter and then it will move to servlet. That's how it happens. Okay? That's how you can actually you know filter out whatever uh, you, have, you want to do in a pre-process. In the same way, when servlet is done with request and when it is trying to uh, give the response back, right? So it may go back to another servlet, right? So here again, what it can do, it will do some post-processing thing and the, uh, the response will be sent. So in this way, the filter works. So here you can see it's a filter which is a pre-processing where let us say uh, whatever client requests we are getting, we are getting in a compressed way, right? The buffer which we are getting is compressed buffer, right? So you can use a filter to decompress that, to decompress. So this is something which is pre-processing, decompress the request, send it to servlet, and once the complete processing is done, and whenever it sends back a response, right? Again, in this servlet which is post-processing servlet, compress it again, and then send it back to client. So in this way, you can do. Anyways, you can also do whatever you are doing in filter analysis in server 2. But you can see here in server, there is something called a separate thread is created for everything, right? Separate thread. So if you feel that the request whatever you are getting is not a valid request to this server, right? So there is uh, no use of creating this, allowing the server to create an internal thread to do that, to do that. So instead, you can just move on to the filter, check whether the request is correct or not and then move it back. Otherwise, if you don't feel that this request is correct, then move back to some other resource. So that whenever you know you have a resource that is a this login, login successful, go to the server, otherwise go to some page or go to some server, right? So you can make that decision or filter in filter itself instead of moving back to server. Okay. So that is how uh, the uh, filter is going to work. And we'll see how we can actually create a filters and all. And now, uh, as the filter is something which is not directly connected to any of the client or any of you know complete uh, web pages, have. so this will be connected only to the server, right? So that it will be pluggable, right? We will not be calling the filter from anywhere. So if you remove the filter, it will work as if there is no filter. And if you insert the filter and give the name of uh, uh, a pattern, yearly pattern of this filter to some solid right? The request should be automatically routed back to filter and the filter routes back to the server. That's what happens. So, 
uh, filter is completely pluggable thing. So here you don't have to. Uh, this uh, filter uh, entry is completely done in uh, web.xml. There is, uh, you know, uh, nothing like uh, uh, you don't have to do anything in class. Yes, you have to write uh, something called filter uh, logic and all right. What to what what exactly? Uh, what exactly is uh, you want to do the validations? Is you have to write it in class. But yes, routing part and connecting part to the uh, these things, right? You have to work on uh, the web XML. So here, in, if you want to plug in a filter or plug out a filter, you can just change something in web .xml, uh and uh, uh, and restart your server, and that will be applied to complete your uh, request. Right? So that's what happens here. So that, that's why your filters are easy to maintain because these are completely pluggable uh, things from the from the configuration file itself. Right? So that is how a filter actually works. So let me just show you uh, where exactly we can actually create a filter now. Right? So here, let me take two more servlets or one servlet here. Uh, let me first create. Let me take a simple page. Let us take a login dot html, which we have already created. Yes, we have a login dot html. Okay, so there you have your uh, input text, password, and this. Perfect. So let us take this one, right? And now let's create a server. The simple server. Let me call it as um, so filter one. Right. Now in this server, we feel that we are directly going to come over to the server and work on it, right? So let me just copy this server filter one, and yeah. So this is a simple server which you have created where. Uh, I'm just sending username and password, and in this alert, blindly, what I'll do, I'll, I'll think that yes, the login credentials, whatever uh, the login page is sending, is correct. Okay? So what I'll do here is I'll just make my response. Okay, set content type. Let us say we have text or uh, HTML. And let us say print writer. <coughs> Just say, uh, instead of, you know, we'll see a simple thing. Let us say, welcome to server. Simple. Right? We are not going to validate anything as of now. Let us first see how we can actually plug in the server pack. Now here we have a uh, login uh, HTML where I have just mentioned my server, server filter 1 and in server filter 1 I just said welcome to server pack. So let me run this uh, thing first still here. Let me just uh, remove them. So here let me first start server. So when this is done, let me add up uh, the servlets thing. Finish. Right. Now let's go back here. <coughs> let us say it has some um, login. So it's servlets login not as GNU. So is it servlet login? Let me run it from here. Let me copy this up. Okay, fine. So you have your username and password. So even if you don't need anything, it doesn't matter because we are not uh, doing any validations here. So let me click on uh, the button here. Click on login. Now you can see. We are at welcome to server. We are directly into server. Now let us do something over here. Now let us create a filter uh, in order to uh, make 
some means of filter to this server, right? Now, so here we have to understand some one more thing called web products and that. So yeah. solid filter one, whenever we created, so it also created some uh, solid uh, mapping, right? Because this is something we have already seen, right? This solid will be created as such, you know, it, it works over this filter, right? Now let me create a filter here, let us say new filter. So you have a direct option here where uh, you can actually select to create a filter. Right on there. <coughs> let me call it as filter one. Right. So here the filter life cycle is again same as the filter is again same as in this server, right? On the life cycle, it will begin with initialize, right? And it will go to the service mo service model, and then it will it will be destroyed. The same model will be working. Now here, the important method is the do filter. Yeah. So this, this do filter is something which is executed every time you get a request from server to the filter, right? Now, let's go to web.xml. You can see this is something which is a web.xml. I mean, this is a filter type which is created. It is same as server. You can just map it to the server XML which you have learned already. You have a server type, right, in which you have, let me just remove these things. Let us make it much simpler. Right? You have a server type. You have a server name in class. And you have server mapping where you have server name which is same as the server name you have to mention so that the class whatever is mentioned here will map to the pattern whatever you are giving here. The same thing we see here. Let me just do this part. You can see filter, right? You have a filter name and a filter class. The filter class is something which is the class which you are going to create, right? And then filter mapping. This is something which is very important. When you filter mapping, you have to give the same name as such. It's, it's, it's obvious. And then URL pattern. We are more interested to uh, map this filter to one server, right? So what we will do in this, in this URL pattern, we will be giving the name of server. So by default, what we will do is, it will just create a filter name itself, right? But here, we will map it to server filter here, right? Now with this, what happens is, whenever Tomcat reads this web.xml, right? It automatically knows that whenever I am trying to call this server, now from here in the login.html, right, I am trying to call this uh, server. Now immediately in, in my web.xml, it goes and checks, okay, pertaining to this name of server, is there any filter? Now you can see here, pertaining to my URL pattern name of server, there is a filter being tagged. Now this filter is the class filter1 which is being tagged. Now first it has to go back to this and then based on uh, the decision taken by filter, it will be moved either to this subject or something else, right? So that is what we are going to see. So this is the first part of the story that whenever we created any filter, it added up our uh, tag over here, right? And we map this filter with our subject filter with, uh, in, in uh, URL pattern under your filter mapping tag, right? So that is how you, you actually connect. That's how I said, uh, your server and uh, your filter will be connected in this way. If you just remove this uh, URL pattern to some other, which means it is plugged out, right? So this is the only place where you actually make a connection between your server and filter. Now let us see what actually we can actually do over here. Now in this two filter, all the things are same. Server request and server response are the same. Whatever we do see here, right? HTTP server request and HTTP server response. But here you are getting something called generic server request and server response. It doesn't matter. It is uh, server request is something which is like you know uh, the super class or parent of HTTP server request. Now this, there is one more attribute or I'm sorry argument called filter chain. This filter chain is an interface which is you know, used in order to maintain or, or in order to move forward the request, right? The filter is something which does something, but it has to move to some resource. In order to move to the resource which it is being tagged here, right? Tagged here, we just use the chain and just say chain.do filter and move the request in response. 
So this line will automatically move to the next filter into this filter. That's what happens here, right? So that is how your filter works, right? Now let me just uh, put in something here. Let me just say don't worry about these things. Let me just do that catch here, and <coughs> let me just place it here. So before this, right? Now here, if you can see, let me write. Uh, print writer. Let me take a print writer so that we we'll just write that. Okay, I'm in my filter, right? So basically, you can see here we directly uh, enter into solid, right? So we're going to see whether our filter works or not first. Just say response dot the writer. The same thing because this is this response is something which you're going to give to our solid. Okay? The same thing, whatever happens here. Now here, just say out dot print. <coughs> just say I'm in filter and just say pre process. Right. So let's say uh, in pre process in the sense. So before calling in select, I'm here. Right? It is pre processing. The same thing. Let us take it here. After this changing call, let us see. I'm in filter post processing. Right? Once the request is done, it will get back to this and we will say post processing. Right? That's what you. And once it is done, just say out of close. We're just creating a simple uh, filter first. Okay. We'll go to server filter one. Right? Now this is what happens. It will just call this back and. It will go to this. Whatever process have to be done in server, it will do, and it will get back to this again. Right? So that is what is here, which is your uh, pre-processing. Whatever you will do, and the post-processing, you can either make it a same filter or give it back to some other class filter. Right? Now let me run this part now. We'll see whether this part is right. Now you can see uh, I have a done. It. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. What is the chain dot do filter do? I didn't understand. Uh, where does it go? Okay, this chain dot do filter. Yeah. So this chain dot do filter, what it will do is whatever this filter is connected to, right? Now you can see here this filter is connected to. It goes to the server. Okay. Yeah. In order to do all that, we use something called chain dot do filter. We will be using something so, called dispatch or yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Fine. No issues. So let me just restart my server. Let's go back here and uh, let us take login dot html. Right. And as of now, click on this. Now you can see I'm in filter pre processing. It says welcome to server and the post processing. Which means you can see here the complete thing. You feel that you are in you are in server. Right. And you will never get any name of uh, filter in the picture, never. But you can see here, even a filter has got, has you know done a pinch up here that okay checking the pre and post processing of your server side. So that is how your filter works, right? And you can see what we have done is we have just created a filter and we have just tagged in our web dot XML. That's it, right? And if I remove this part, right? Let us say I'm just make I'm just plugged out, right? I have plugged out and I already started my server. I'm not touching my code, right? Let's go back here. And uh, you have your login dot html. Click on this. Now you can see. So there is no filter. No? That's how we call a filter as a pluggable filter, right? And yes, you should always, you know, make very uh, conscious dependency on your filter. You should not completely, you know, do something on filter. So that tomorrow, whenever anyone want to plug it out, right? We should make you make sure that okay, even if it plugs out, your server should be related in a in a better manner, right? So that's how uh, you should actually write your filter, right? <coughs> so that is what is about the filter. Now let's move on with one one more uh, big example in filter itself. Now let us go into yeah. validation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, can one filter be tagged to more than one servlet? 
uh, one filter, uh, in, I mean, you can actually connect your servlets with filters. And one servlet can have one more than one filter. But no, this that's the way. Because yeah. I have a filter where I have like multiple uh, switch case kind of things. I mean, maybe some of them are common. Yeah, you can do it in filter itself. I'll show you that. You can actually oh, yes. see. Possibly, you can right? add, Yeah, it is possible. It is possible. Like, uh, okay. uh, but basically in web.xml, you can actually connect to your filter to only one servlet. But yes, in this file, in this filter, you can actually map to any number of servlets. Yes, you can do that. I'll show you that part. Okay. 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 I'll, I'll show you. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, so where was it? Uh, yeah. So here, yeah, that's what. So we are going to uh, see the same uh, thing what Sumita was just asking. So here in my login, what uh, HTML, right? So I have a username and password. So when I click on submit, it, it feels that I'm going to serve that filter, right? This serve filter. But as we have seen, as we have tagged our serve filter to my filter, yeah. it will go back to this. And here, we are getting the same uh, query stream, whatever is being sent to server. Now here we have a provision to read the complete uh, query stream, right? In this filter, do some operations and send it to this server using a chain or do filter, or we can actually send back to something else too. Let us see how we can do that, right? Now, this is something which we are actually checking as some authentication, maybe, right? Uh, in my filter itself. Now let's go back to uh, my, uh, what is that, yeah, filter itself. Now here, the question comes, how can I read the query string in my filter? Now if you remember, the same thing we can use. If you remember, we used to take a request, let me call it as user is equal to, you have a request dot get parameter. But everything is same. Even in filter inside, everything works as same as that. So let me take a new name here and paste it here. So this is what your username is. And then let us take it as string user, sorry, password is equal to request dot get parameter of your password, which is PWD. Right? Now these are the two parameters. Now, but basically, login page thought that okay whenever I click on submit it will go to this filter and this fil uh, sorry it will go to the servlet and this uh, servlet is ready yes that is true but this servlet is you know uh, good enough to have a filter so what it is, what this servlet does is the same way request and response it is sending to filter first and this filter is taking care of fishing up everything right so here we have got a username and password and let us say, let us just check that. If a user is equals with uh, an object, let us say XYZ, it is XYZ and, and if password equals, let us say, some one, two, three, right, which means these are two cases, let us say. I'm just taking an example, right. Now, if it is true, then what we'll do, we'll just pass this on, right? Now, let me put this over here, right? And this here, so that we know when it is pre-processing and post-processing. Let me put a break here. And a break over here. Next. Now, if it is a true condition, right? Now I want to move to the tag server to this filter. So in order to move the tag filter, you can just use chain dot do filter so that it can maintain the chain and whatever the tag uh, server is there, it will give it back to the server. Right? No. So what do we have to do in a failed situation? Now this is a situation where I don't want to send uh, the request back to my servlet, which is tag. But in, instead, what I want to do is, I want to move to some other resource. Now let us say I want to get back to my login and say, my uh, the username and password being provided is wrong. Right? It can happen, right? Because whatever uh, things are being provided may be wrong. Now here, this is the case where we will be using uh, something else to move to some other resource. Now let me just say out dot print. So if you remember, we have already seen this part, the request dispatcher. 
where I can include something, right? Just say uh, username or password uh, is on something here, right? And uh, <coughs> break it up. And then I'll use my request dispatcher. You can see everything will be saved. I'll use my request dispatcher again. Right? Let me call it as LABJ request dispatcher is equal to now what I want to do is I want to send my request to some other resource. So I have to use my request object dot you have something for this get request dispatcher. Now I want to give the whole back to my login that is same let us right because the login is not successful. Now let me call it as login.htm itself. I'll show you, we'll also see how we can actually move this to some other server. Don't worry about that. Okay. So this part here. And then let us see. Now here we can do actually this in two ways. Either in forward, right? If you do a forward, right? So whatever you want to print or whatever you want to do in the same server or a filter will not be shown. So instead of using forward, we'll use include. Include is something which will take care of the current thing whatever you are doing in here and it will also include this resource beneath that. That is what happens in include. If you remember, we have uh, learned it now request this fashion, how to move into some other resource. Right? Now this is how you can actually tag multiple things. Huh? Now as of now we have just seen one part, we will also see some more parts. So, so let me just uh, remove this and let me restart the server. Let's go back and just give some uh, not HTML. Now let me give XYZ and one, two, three. That's a login. Now you can see I'm in filter, right? Three person, welcome to solid. It directly went to the solid here because the login was uh, successful. You can see here the login was successful. And that's why it directly went to my chain that do filter, which will be here. Right? So that is a two case. Now let's go back and see what happens when I give a wrong credential here, which is my login.html. Let me give some ABC something and login. Right? Now we can see here. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You have to map your response dot set content type to the text of HTML, right? You have to this part, no worries. That's fine. Right? <coughs> because we are going to include that, right? So that's why we got the complete, uh, so you can see here. So our request dispatcher will, but it included a complete thing there. It says username and password wrong, right? But no, that's fine. We just have to say it has a content type as same thing. So let me just, uh, so we need this project and we start this project. <coughs> so now let's go back to this and let me call it as login.html and now we'll just go to ABCD and now you can see it's perfect. Huh? It goes to another person. And what happened you can see here, it says this username and password is wrong, just I gave the username and password correct. Now let me give one more time the username and password some false, it will come back again, right? You can see here, it is working you know, on my server itself. You cannot see that it is working on filter, right? It is completely working as if you are in a server, but you are doing complete action in a filter, right? So that is how it's, it's very powerful thing, right? Uh, if you give some uh, right username and password, you want to see that you have if you get back to your server. Right. So that is what happens. Right. Now here, even if anyone tries to modify this this here, right, let us say I am just modifying it here like this. Right. We are in server. Click on this. Now you can see, even if you modify, doesn't matter at all. Right? You are in a, you are in a server. But whatever action you do here, right, it will first route it back to filter do all the processing it needed and then get back to the resource whatever is needed. 
right? So now here you can see it, it did the same thing but in a different way, right? So that is what is uh, there. Now <coughs> the next point which we have to know here is in most of that I just I just you know printed something called welcome, right? But let us see whether the same request the query string is being persisted over here too or not, right? Because what we are doing because of this web guide XML filter case, right? We are actually routing whenever we get a request to the server, we are routing the server back to filter, and we are getting back the uh, uh, if it if everything goes fine, we are getting back to server. Now let us see how, whether we are getting the uh, query string back to this or not, right? Let me take take it as user is equal to again my request dot get parameter of so this key which is you name and you have your string as so is equal to your request dot <coughs> oops I'm sorry to get parameter of your as well it's PWD you can just see it as as well now this is what we have done and now so we are not going to check anything because we are we are complete flow on our filter right so we are not going to check anything we just say welcome uh, to server it and just say the user here right and just say I want to show the password that's fine you can just show it up right now this is what you have done and then close the stream here okay. So that is what we are doing here, which is just showing it up as a welcome. Now oh, let me rebuild this project. So here we start the survey. Okay. And then let's go back to the lobby here. Now let me give some XYZ. And password is one two three. Click on the button. Now you can see I'm in filter keep processing, right? You can see that yes, it got worked, right? Now you can see why we are not getting the uh, why we are not getting it back. So I hope you understood this. Why we are not getting back here is we are actually printing something into response on other side. We are just clo closing the stream, which means this is my end of my. <coughs> I'm doing something which is ending over here, right? So from here, when I move to some other resource, we'll connect back to some other server and we'll see whether it is being persisted, right? But as of now, we just call a pre processing and that's it, we end it, and it, which means we are moving to some other resource from this server. But that is not important. What is important here is you can see here my query string is being persisted even in the server, right? I use an password. But actually, it went through the filter and came back to the server. Now here itself, let's go back and see when I add something else, click on login, you can see it went back again to my uh, login. Go back to this again, solve that login, you can see the same thing. Right. So that's how you can actually connect back to a server. Now, let us connect to one more server here. Let me create one more server, let us see how it works. Maybe let me take this as a server. Let me make this all that uh, 2, so we will to finish. So what we are uh, going to do here is, right, so let us say, here we have one else, right, let me create one more else in a filter, I mean filter now. <coughs> so here, we will say if my user dot equals with admin, let us say, right. So do one more one more uh, you know condition would I'm putting. So here what I will say, I'll just take record dispatch again. Right? So L O B J R D is equal to so I want to get my request dispatch or request dot guess request dispatcher. Right? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mention my subject thing, which is so uh, filter two here. And, and what I'm going to do here 
since I'm not going to include insert, I'm just saying that request is pressure dot forward of my request and response. Now here what I'm doing is actually pitching up my request to some other server here, right? Now let's go back to the server and just say something called <coughs> Have a response dot set content type of a text or HTML. And we have a print writer. It is equal to a response dot get writer. Right? Okay. And this and this is dot. Just the admin second server and just say welcome button. Very quickly, just a welcome space button. And as of now, I'm just you know putting it as a hard coded one and just say out dot we have a close. Right? Now, what we're doing is I just created a second server. Right, so that in my from my field card, I want to make a scope to actually move to different resources, right? So, but the, how I'm getting into filter is through one server only, right? Right, so I got into this part, right? And now, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm checking everything, and from here, wherever I want to move, in. so you are only seeing how to move to a HTML page or a JSP, it is same even with a JSP, right? And then we are actually going to solve it. Now let's run this project. If we restart this, go back to this outline. <coughs> we have a login.html. Now let me call it as admin and some password. Click on login. Now you can see, I'm in second server, it went to this. But you can see here, it will still store. Why? Why it is staying in here? Because we are using something called request dispatcher. Right? We're using the request dispatcher and you know the request dispatcher will maintain us will maintain your URL but your internal uh, content will be sent to the actual resource whatever you want to go. So this is how you can actually uh, move on to the server server. Now here as you can see I'm actually you know interested more on uh, the dynamic thing. I want to get even the details whatever are sent to server one right because even this is a true case so here let me just take it again let us say i have a string and uh, let me call it as user again it's equal to you have a request which means i can read my request back again here get parameter of union right and let us say you have a string the building is equal to your request dot get parameter of your PW which is password let's say right <coughs> this is your password now what I'm going to do is here uh, let me just split this up let me, uh, let me close to here So let me make it dynamic here. So user will be shown plus we have a password part. Okay. So I'm just showing uh, something password over here. Okay. So welcome the user and the password. So which is something which is dynamic here. Okay. But anyways, here we have a filter. It can be done in here, why? Right? Because we know that okay, everything whatever comes to this side that is something which is coming after filtering itself, right? So that's how it happens. So here I'm that that will be in my is an email showing up here, right? Now let us run this up again. So let us call it as uh, admin. And some password. Okay. Now you can see it is my first solid part. 
I'm able to read all the things whatever are being <coughs> sent to server from mine. Right? So how it is possible here is we are using something called request dispatcher. Request dispatcher is something which is which dispatches the request whatever we are getting to the current servlet. Anyway, the servlet is giving back to filter and from filter we are designing uh, right way to move. Right? This is how you can, you can actually make a move to the servlet to required servlet. Right? So Sumita, I hope this is what you were asking, right? Katrina. Okay, perfect. Now this is how you can actually move. No, this is something which is same. Yes. Right? Yeah, Johnny. Yeah, go on. Yeah, uh, if you, uh, yeah, I mean, if if you don't want to send that through the URL, uh, what we should be using? If you don't, uh, I'm sorry. If you don't I mean, now that USR password, everything is displayed in the URL, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if we don't want that to be in the URL, is there any other method that we can yeah, use? Yeah, you can use you can use a post method, right? Just use your post method here. We have already seen right, so you can just use your post method, right? So that it won't go, it won't go to your uh, uh, see what if you use your method called get right. So this get method is something which uh, everything will be shown in your uh, URL itself, right? Now let me just show you that. But it won't it won't work it won't work here as such. Let me show so because we have handled everything in get. Let's go back to login. What is saying that? Right? Now let us say I am doing my. Okay, let me do some wrong uh, thing. Let us say something else. When I log in here, right? Can you see this? I am not able to see something in quotes. Right? Because everything is being done in a post. Right? Now let us go back and give some right thing XYZ and some password 123. When I click on login, now you can see I am in server filter 1. But in server filter one, I am handling everything in my get. Well, let me just copy paste the same thing in my post also, post method. <coughs> right. The post method. Now let's go back to login.html and let us have restarted this project. Let me just restart this project. Here. Yeah, perfect. And go back to user and some password. Click on login. Now you can see you can't see the URL here, right? But you can actually see that okay, this is happening. Fine, Johnny. Is it what you are asking? Yeah. And we don't have URL, but everything is being sent through the body uh, itself, right? That's why post is something which is uh, you should use the post method for a heavier things, right? Like for heavier objects and all. If you feel that is uh, obviously, if you have username and password, you will never be showing it in your query string. I am just taking an example. Never ever show the user path in a query string, right? You should never use that, right? For the for those things, you should always go for some secure way. And post is something which is more secure, right? Because everything will be attached to your body itself, right? That's fine. <coughs> fine. Then any more doubts here? Right, so that's how uh, it works. Srina, uh, just one question. Sure, Sunita. Uh, these filters, are they used more uh, common by the programmers for like the way you explained it, the samples, or is it like more uh, at a site level or a server level just like the Microsoft is happy? Uh, no, no, no. It, 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 it is in both, uh, Sri Sunita. Uh, I mean, see, if you, uh, the only reason why we do this filter is to get rid of the multiple threading being created in server, each and every server, to make you know to make your bandwidth low, the first reason, right? Um, and 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 also for maintenance purpose, this will be used more. So during development itself, right? If you want to see if there is any loopholes, you can pitch in your filter. And if you if you are making it into production, you may remove the filters. So it all depends on. Yeah, that's what is it like more configuration type of uh, usage? Uh, yeah, it's, it's more, more like it's, 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 it's more like configuration. Yes, it's more like configuration. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it is more like configuration. But most of the people do use filter, right? Instead of checking all these things in server, right? 
because server processing will be very uh, heavy, right? That's why it will be used here. And also, this is something which you can also use for, uh, you know, time dilation. So let me show you that part also. Uh, oh, let's see. see how much time. I yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can also see that. Yeah, let okay. us say start time, and let me call it as system dot. We have something called current time minutes, right? It will give me milliseconds. So whatever time it is being entered here, uh, it's in milliseconds. And uh, so if it is coming back to the server, right? If it is coming back to the server, then you can actually calculate that, right? So, so for example, is, something like this, if a servlet is already in production for quite uh -huh. some time and if suddenly there are complaints about the performance, uh, the uh -huh. floor is, then without even touching the servlet code, you, can, do you, can, do you can just yes, yes, apply yes, one yes, uh, yes, yes. make this in the config. Perfect, right? you can do that. So whatever servlet, uh, you know, whatever conditions you have, put it, uh, you have placed in servlet, right? directly put them, put in filter and yes, you can do that. But you can directly okay. touch in your filter, yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So you can also uh, actually uh, talk about the, uh, let us say L, uh, LNG, um, your end time is equal to this system dot, uh, you have current release, right? And you can just say out, so let me just remove this part. And make it here. You can just say out dot, in uh, so I'm going to say time taking. Yeah, for passing. So time taking for passing is something which is uh, n minus minus uh, or LNG n time minus or uh, your start time. And this is a movies. So you can just say maybe six milliseconds. Okay. Now you can just put it in this way. Time taking for this. Now, obviously, so if you are using this side, you have to get back to this again. Right? Then only you can actually uh, you know, print it for you, right? But that is what happens. So in my solid filter, what I am doing here is perfect. So I am not interested in the one post. Okay, you can use this post if you want. If you want to make uh, everything visible, so let me just uh, write this. Let me just do some this part. Let us see whether it comes back to this filter. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Now we log in at HTML. Let me just call. Okay, let us do some long thing. Long thing. Right now you can see it took some eight milliseconds. Right? Time taken for passing this. It, it's a, it will be very fast. Right? If you want to make it considerably more right, so what you can do here is in your survey. So we have got this. Maybe you can just make it as maybe you can just make it some some ten ten seconds deep. Right? Go back here and <coughs> nothing not HTML. Let's give some more. Okay. Now you can see. Oh, it's much faster. Two milliseconds. Okay. So then, <coughs> directly went in and I know it got better. But we can actually calculate each and every you know time taken for each and every request, right? And also you can also you know do something like in you know, uh, all the parameters whatever we can get it from here, right? Like uh, how many you know, uh, let us say servlet filter one is a main servlet, which is like a bottleneck servlet for the whole web application, right? So whatever, the, how many requests are coming, uh, uh, right? You know, you can actually you know, calculate the traffic over here, right? Because this filter will be common for one servlet, and this servlet is something each and every request will be going through this filter letters. Uh, sorry, this servlet letters, right? You can do everything in this filter itself. You have something called request uh, dot. You will be having some local address. You can see here, right? Local address. You can actually read, read from where actually getting the request, right? You can also read the IP of the person who is actually sending, right? And remote host, remote address, everything. So whatever you can actually pitch in, right? You can actually do everything in your filter itself. Instead of doing that part in threading, right? You can use your thread uh, filter part 
and then you can uh, tag it yourself right if you feel that your filter is again making your uh, life again uh, you know making uh, some performance issues just go back and remove this connection that's it you don't have to remove the whole filter right it always better to do it in this way so this is something which is a filter and there is some uh, one more uh, part in filter which is configurations you can also set your configurations in filter right? uh, like we have seen init params if you remember we can do something called init params in our solid right in the same way you can also give some init params to your uh, this type init params right where here uh, it is something which is solid config right in the same way you have your filter config right we will we'll come we will we'll come to that in uh, tomorrow's class filter config right and uh, yeah that will be the end of servers actually uh, once we are done with the filter uh, things we will see the new annotation which is uh, introduced in uh, servers 3 right so everything whatever we have learned is the latest one which is a servers 3 version uh, and in market it is the latest version right so 3 dot something right and we will see one more thing we will introduce in server which is uh, servlet annotation we will see what exactly it is tomorrow okay. so let us wind up here and uh, let us meet uh, in tomorrow's class okay, okay.